We are the Holocaust. Welcome to We Are the Lollipost. Hello, Bouncy. Hello, Rob. I hope you're ready, because there's a storm of brewing. There is a storm We've just brewing. seen a verti bird fly over from off of Fallout 3. It's, yeah, now the wind's and kicking coming up. into Fallout 4. My cat's looking concerned. My cats can sense danger. What's it? What's the verti bird flying away from? Because oh, the wind is behind yeah, us. Like exactly. It's almost like a nuclear wind. Yeah. No Ronan yeah. Keaton in your garden this week. No. Nobody breaking in next door this week. No, no, they've just left the garage open this time. So, time. hopefully, we will... Um, Survive. Yeah. That was very exciting, though, seeing a proper VTOL. Mm. I've never seen one flying before. I think no. you hadn't either. No. And amazingly, the propellers weren't forwards. They were up still. Because I thought they changed to yeah. forwards to pull it forward. But I guess they could fly like a helicopter, maybe. I don't know. It's very exciting, though. Yeah. That's the highlight of my week. It's been a very slow week. That's been a slow News week. wise, particularly, very slow week. Yeah, we're in that lull. I'm living the life of a single man this week, mm. but not a single man who hasn't any partner. Just my girlfriend has gone on holiday. And left you with her dog. Left me with her dog, yeah. and I do not like the dog. No. And the dog does not like me. No. It tries to like me. I don't try to like it. it feigns interest in what you're telling it. Well, I'm, I'm training it a little bit because it needs right. discipline. Right. It was a puppy when they got it, right. and uh, they trained it to do things like sitting and mm. stuff, but it was just loopy. So now, when if, before, if you open the back door to let it in from the toilet, it would charge through the house with muddy feet, yeah. spin around a bit. Now it walks in, sits on a mat, I close the door, and it'll sit there until I tell it to move. I'll let it dry off, and then I'll let it move. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good trick. When you say you'll let it move, you mean you get it in a headlock? So when no, you say it can move... But it comes in, and I just put my hand... Like a policeman in the sixties, yep. or Chris Pratt in Jurassic World. Yeah, just like that. Actually, yep. it's pretty much without. You can put yourself a waistcoat <laughs> without the leather trousers. Yeah, just like kind of just a hand out, and I just go whoop. I don't think you wore leather trousers. They look a bit leathery. At least you know, well worn. I just think if I was looking after trout, d- 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 dinosaurs. Trout. If I was looking after trout, I don't have the trousers. I think if I was looking after trousers, perm. but no. If I was looking after velociraptors, I'd probably want a bit of protection on my hide. We. And leather would give you a bit of. Yeah. So you wouldn't go for assless chaps? Certainly not, yeah. no. Um, so yeah, so it's been a bit weird because I've been sort of watching telly. Hmm. Lots of episodes of It's Only, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yep. And uh, whatever else I've been watching, I can't talk properly, apparently. Zoolander. Yep. Watch that. The other guys, which uh, is criminally underrated. It is. If for nothing else, the opening five minutes of Samuel L. Jackson and Dwayne Johnson is the funniest action buddy cop pastiche I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Where they just so come back from. Up there. They, uh, I always like the bits where he played down his wife, even Mendes. Yeah. Oh, she's very plain. <laughs> and then finally everybody meets her like, what? <laughs> no, sorry, who is this? Who, really, who is this? But yeah, just that the idea of the opening car chase causing... Sort of sixteen million dollars worth of damage for, a but they're the quarter, heroes. Three quarters of a an ounce of marijuana yep. possession, which was not even a felony. Oh, it was great! It's, if you've not seen it, it's uh, Will Ferrell at his best. Yep, America. <laughs> he puts his foot down. I did my first dash pop. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the uh, the uh, oh god, it was dirty, dirty Mike and his boys. Yeah, the hobos have like. an orgy in his car and they call it the soup kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. Um, funnier than Zoolander, actually, which I do, I do still Ooh. enjoy. Ooh. That's, that's, the fir- that's the first time I've seen Zoolander since it came out. Okay. I still enjoy Zoolander a lot. A lot of the cameos are weird now, uh, uh, in hindsight, mm. where it's like, oh, Gary Shandling. <laughs> so, uh, oh, Gary uh, Shandling. Yeah, okay. wow, I'd almost forgotten how great Gary Shandling was, but... Mm. Stephen Dorff and Winona Ryder, and it was a very 90s cameo list. Yeah, I guess... Paris Hilton before she did a sex tape. Yeah, I guess that was kind of Stephen Dorff's prime popularity after yeah. Blade as well. He was yeah. doing that. Whereas Billy Zane has always kind of had that element in the whole, this, this is, is your friend, friend Billy Zane. Zane. He's cool. <laughs> and also David Bowie, just David Bowie. Yeah, and David Duchovny being made to look old mm. now looks about the same as he did in Zoolander. Yep. But minus the... Weird hand. Sealed hand. It was still very, very good. Yeah. That's still very funny. 
It's weird looking back thinking that Will Ferrell wasn't a star then. Yeah, that probably was when he was first. Because it was a sort of Saturday screen. Night Live spin off y thing mm. and he kind of got in. Because he did that and they did The Roxbury about the same time. And it was from there that he started yeah. to really. So, or at least over here, he would have been known over there. Oh, yeah, it was Saturday Night Live. But, yeah. A big it's, deal. I, I watched it with the sequel coming up. I thought it'd be good to mm. refresh. refresh myself. And it still doesn't fail to make me laugh when you've got. Um, is it Alexander Skarsgård who was in True Blood? I didn't watch True Blood. Did you watch so. Battleship? Yes. With Liam Neeson. He was in that. Is it Alexander Skarsgård? Oh, uh, no, if I see the face. Yeah, he's The like name a, rings a bell, but I can't put a face to it. He's got blonde hair, very, very good looking man, but he was one of the models who dies in the. Uh, freak gasoline fire accident. Freak gasoline fire accident. But yeah, there you go, there yeah, he Alexander is. Alexander Skarsgård. But it was funny seeing him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, seeing him as like a, a 20 year old man. Well, though he'd have been 28 by the look of that birth date. Yep. But yeah, it was uh, just weird seeing him like play it all like, uh, you made it look like you didn't understand the joke. And that, yeah, that was him. Yeah. So yeah, look at it, going back to the film sometimes, you see somebody in an early role, you're like, oh, mm. look who it was. Like Tracy Morgan mm. um, was in The Other Guys. And sitting I don't next remember to, him, though. It's been a long time since I watched when it. The, right? When in The Other Guys they, go to the, they get the bribe, they go to the basketball game and they've got the front oh, row seats. Oh, the basketball game. And they're right. next to Brooke Shields. I know the scene, yep. I don't and remember next, Tracy Morgan being Next there, to Brooke Shields was Tracy Morgan. Right. And uh, that was another one where it's just like, oh, yeah. If I hadn't seen 30 Rock, yeah. I wouldn't have known who Tracy Morgan was. Yeah, true. So, uh, yeah. But they were, they were both very good. You know, I just sort of been watching telly, playing Destiny. Oh. I got, well, because I did the... Gallahorn. Gallahorn. Yeah. I thought, oh, I've got enough strange coins for this. Before they nerf it on September And then I thought, oh, yeah, but that's only a rocket launcher. What I'll do is I'll buy an exotic engram. That'd be better. So I bought that and then remembered that I already had an exotic piece of gear. All right. And then it gave me a thing for a hunter class. Yeah. Or a titan class. And I was like, well, I'm using Warlock. Why have you not given me a Warlock piece? Because they haven't fixed that yet. That's so what then, the patch is for. So then <laughs> I did nerf a load the of Galahorn and fix all that. I, yeah, I did some more. And then... Uh, I got enough to buy another engram, bought it, got one for my class, but then remembered I already had one for my class. You can only have one equipped at a time. You should have just bought the Galahorn. So I should have bought the Galahorn. So no, then nerfed used, or not, it's still going to be pretty handy. I used the uh, the uh, motes of light to buy the exotic shard or whatever it is right, yep. to upgrade when I get to that point yeah. as well. But yeah, other than that, uh, lots of Prison Elders. Really liking Prison Elders. Huh. I've I've not enjoyed tried. It when I played with the flares. We had some good sessions on there. Yeah, I've not tried the high levels yet. I'm still on like the base level, but I'm just trying to get a feel for the patterns and what comes the in. The highest and... we did was the 34. Yeah, and I think we may have managed it once or twice out of several goes because it can be incredibly frustrating mm. depending on what cycle they have that week of like, what levels you have and things. Yeah, I mean, I did the I was attempted the heroic strike this week, but I didn't manage it. And uh, yeah, yeah. No, heroic strike. I did. Uh, that was against the Foscoth right thing. Uh, the, it was the heroic story. Oh, I didn't the do because story mission. Yeah, mission. it was just too. Much. It was a level thirty taking on the soul of Crota. Okay, and so I was on my own. Oh yeah, yeah and that yeah, was very right, yeah. tricky. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So I think, yeah, yeah I, I played Friday briefly with um, the flares to get the coins to get the Galahorn. Yeah, and uh, I don't know when we'll play again. We played with. Did Welsh you get the Galahorn? Yeah, yeah. I'd, oh, I already yeah. had some coins. We literally right. had to do like the um, weekly heroic. I think would have been given us enough. Do you believe that it is genuinely random? Like what Jesse the drop? keeps saying for Galahorn, just showing up in Zer's inventory. Uh, it seems a bit odd, like the, the most overpowered weapon in the game suddenly drops right Wasn't there right a guy in, it. I want to say Japan, who kind of like supposedly worked out the algorithm for what Zero would have? I don't know. I mean, Bungie have been saying a lot that, no, this is genuinely random. This mm. could have happened like twice in the first few weeks. But, but the week before, didn't he have the, the Hunter boots with the quadruple jump? And that was not like the first time he'd had those for sale. Right. They've dropped for people, yeah, but it yeah. was like the first time he'd had them for sale. It's, yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. Because I've seen some things several times. And I'm yeah. like, I've already got that. I already bought that from Zero like six months ago. But then if it is random, then that's fair. But mm. I, just think, I just think it's almost like everybody's waited so long for it. Yeah. And then suddenly it was almost like, well, before we do this, maybe we could just fake one. Yeah. 
Just make it happen. Just flick the switch to make that be the Sorry. thing. Because look how many people it brought back into the game. Yeah, and that was the irony of it when they said they were going to nerf it. It's like, there are now people who are deciding on their groups based on whether they have this weapon. But we're not going to sell it and we're just going to leave it random. So we're going to nerf it. It's like, well, you could probably pretty quickly solve this by going, Sir's got it for yeah. one week only. He's not going to have it again until like next summer. Mm. And all of a sudden you've got a glut of people coming in. Yeah. You've combated the problem with this Reddit whole... Reddit like, had a whole oh, thing okay. saying, don't please don't start subjects about Callahorn being available because there were so many people flooding the boards mm. with it. Um, it trended on Twitter yeah. immediately. And it, like I say, it, the, uh, the player stats must... I'd love to see the, the graph for pre-announcement yeah. and then like 12 hours later and just see how many jumper players on average per weekend just jumped on was grabbed impacted it because now, now pissed off again yeah because it's it's an interesting thing because it's something they could control if they wanted to mm. and actually maintain a, a healthy amount of people when but, it starts to go to a low without content because yeah. you could just drop something that people have been waiting for but we or, touched on this a bit last week there's these weird things that have been broken and it now feels like they're trying to fix them with the Taken yeah. King and you have to pay for those fixes <laughs> <laughs> have they ever done it and I don't think they have, but you'll know better than I. Have Sir uh, ever had like a Steam sale? I don't where, remember one. Because that would be a good idea. Him just have a few items on a reduced rate mm. for like a, a promo sale, like at Christmas time. Imagine that. Him in a Santa hat. <laughs> just go in. I don't, I don't remember seeing a Steam sale. I'd, I'd like that. Mm. I'd like that a lot. But I'd, I'd still squander all my money on something I don't really need. Like the time I used on Strange Coins by Motes of Light thinking it was the other way around. Yeah. But. You know, I did it five times before I tweaked. What's what that? Cat's freaking me out. Oh, I thought it was a bird. Um, I think he might have eaten the bird. <laughs> it seems to have put on some weight. He certainly healthy. does. But, uh, Another hole in his neck's healed. Uh, he's put weight back on. Did you, did you inflate it before it healed? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> it sat too close well, to The tiny heel, the tiny hole heals up. <laughs> Just, you inflate the cat. Yeah, well, you know, we once inflated a squirrel on the Holocaust. Mm, mm. Sure you did. I certainly did. It was the squirrel off of the Carl and Block label advert. Oh. So, you know, yeah. what can you do? So, so as yeah. we mentioned, quiet period in general. <laughs> quiet period. Taking where... King is probably the next big release now. In, well, in Gears of War Remastered is out oh, next week. Of course it is. So I'm hoping that's to get that. pretty much for And it's not a, a new game, is it? No. Uh, Mad Max is the 3rd of September. Right. But again, is getting... That hasn't got a massive amount of anticip- I think they've, anticipation around they've it. They've brought that out to not clash with Fallout I think they've mm. pulled it forward so it hasn't had a chance to really advertise as much as it could the film did really well they should yeah. have just ridden on the back well, of that's the what I mean. why the film did, why, why didn't they have I that I think the budget has just been used on the mm. game and that's that I mean ultimately people who care about a Mad Max game being made known as a Mad Max game being made it was They'll had probably a big feature anyway. at Gamescom yeah sometimes you don't have to promote shit out of the game mm. but it's hard to gauge how popular it's going to be early I hope it does well it looks interesting it just looks like a depressing version of Fallout, which is quite <laughs> starting to think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I might pick it up in the sale. I'm not going to get it brand new. Uh, Gears I am definitely getting. So, if any of you guys are getting it or have it on the 360, do get in touch because we will set up some rooks. Yep, I've still got my 360 versions. I've been kind of half looking at the uh, Gears Xbox One bundle. Yeah. Tempted. So I'm getting to that point. I, I had September as the month I want to yeah. upgrade ready for things like it's Fallout it's a sensible bundle because you get good value for not much money exactly plus um, um, cheating the system by getting the games with gold stuff so I've got Metal it. Gear and well this is the thing like for anyone listening who doesn't know what we're on about basically if you're a member of gold you can download the Xbox One games effectively you via the website it. Yeah, you do not, the games with gold as long as you attempt to purchase it yeah. via good. the promo games with gold purchase thank yeah. you for your purchase yeah. Great. and then it's yours whenever you get the console even if you don't want the game mm. It's weird that people go, oh, I'm not going to buy that. Just put it in your basket. Just don't install it. Yeah. See, like, if I'd realised before that I could do that, I'd have got a lot more. I'm I'm regretting not doing it for every 360 game now that backwards compatibility is a thing. Because well, Bioshock Infinite was on there. And I don't think I downloaded on. Bioshock Infinite. See, I'm playing Bioshock Infinite at the moment because of Games yeah. of Gold. Well, that's, there's some new backwards compatible games being added next week. Mm. And fact, let me find Bioshock it. Infinite is on that list. Yes. Along with Ghost Recon Future Soldier, which is selling for about three quid at the moment on Xbox 360. And so they were saying that there's going to be a huge bunch of games on sale. Here we go. Major Nelson. Larry. 
Herp. 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 Let me see. They've got the definitive list. I think Metro 2033 is in there, which I have on disc. Uh, do, 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 do. Did he actually put a list up? Let's see. Well, Metal Gear, I mentioned. How to Survive Storm Warning. Which came out this week. Yeah, yep. I've got that downloaded so I've got that today. As well, uh, it gets even better. Back on blah, blah, blah. Backwards compatibility launches in November. All future 360 games of God titles will be playable on Xbox One. Yep. Well, they teased towards that anyway. And they haven't actually put a list of which 10. He no. mentioned 10. Which I suppose games. is sensible because people would never buy them mm. if they did. Uh, uh, Kind of advertised it, but yeah. Oh, here we go. I, I get it now. Ten free games before 2016. Okay, so, so yeah, with can... the November stuff and what's on there now, yeah. right? So it's, it's, it's play with words. But... Either way, it's a good deal. And yeah. like I say, if you've got the Xbox One, download the 360 stuff. Either way, because it's going to work. Mm. Um, and like I said, Bioshock Infinite being back to compatible, I could have played that with all the DLC I've purchased mm. on Xbox One, and I haven't, and I'm gutted. <laughs> but hopefully, they'll put it on sale at yeah. some point. I mean, See, here's the thing: like, if they put a load of 360 games available for a fiver, mm. I'd probably spend 100 quid. Yeah, just get my favourite games. I'm surprised games they digitally. haven't done that with some games. Well, they do have the promotions. But 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 I mean, they've just done Future Soldier. Yeah, which happened after Gamescom, where they showed it on the backwards mm. compatibility wheel. But it makes me think that's going to be once given away for free before yeah. Rainbow Six comes out. Um, but talk about Rainbow Six. Mm. It's been delayed. Yeah, it was due on October 13th. It's been pushed back to December 1st. Which is a dangerous move. Maybe, because it's still in time for Christmas, but... It's after Call of Duty, though. Yeah. And if you go after Call of Duty... And you're also closing your window to for people to buy it for Christmas. Yeah. Because people start earlier and earlier. <laughs> Although you are also keeping the door open for the longer possible before a sale price... Because very often games, it, games that mm. come out in September periodically will feature heavily in pre-Christmas sales. Yeah, The Crew came out last, I think September or October. I picked that up in a game sale for £17 for the limited edition. Mm. Everything drops to a massively low price. So if you're releasing in December, you're kind of safe from that aggressive retail yeah. period of time. So maybe it's more... Uh, preserving margin mm. I mean, anything what, else you, what did you yourself say here we go this wasn't an easy decision but based on the feedback we've received and based on our own internal tests we felt there are adjustments and improvements we can make including improving the co-op experience across all game modes weapon and gadget balancing as well as menu and interface navigation so basically we want to tidy things up before launch which they said with Watch Dogs they didn't really work out too well mm. and they said so, it with Assassin's and they're still Creed. holding the closed beta from the 24th of September which is what they planned no. anyway so that hasn't really moved it's well at least it is internal testing well, more than yeah. anything I mean because it isn't um, as a response to player feedback where everybody just slagged it off straight away yeah so yeah hmm. uh, do you know what you, you can you can't relaunch a game no you get one chance and, and that was part of the problem with uh, Arkham Knight yeah is that all these different bits and bobs mainly with the DLC yeah. went wrong they're now fighting a battle to recover from that speaking about Arkham Knight mm. I purchased the two pre-order bits of DLC right they've made them available for sale okay. or if you've got the season pass you get them as part of that yep. so the Harley Quinn story mission where you go to Bloodhaven right. the home of Nightwing mm-hmm. and you get to rescue or liberate Poison Ivy Okay. so the events of the story is Poison Ivy's working with Scarecrow mm-hmm. Scarecrow basically sends Harley to get her Playing as Harley, you know, I said last time, maybe Batgirl wasn't as much fun because everyone wants to be Batman. Yep. Playing as Harley proves that's not the case. Right. The Batgirl DLC is just horseshit. <laughs> uh, the Harley Quinn ho- story mode I enjoyed more, even though it was half the size and it only cost me £1.59. It still makes a mockery of that DLC season pass. Well, this price. is it. Like, so far, I've spent nine quid, less than nine quid, and I've got three pieces of story DLC. I've got the Red Hood as well, mm. which is the. Uh, classic comic character yep. um, he goes after Black Mask the Arkham yep. Origins big bad and uh, yeah like both of them play as the characters you'd expect and like I said that I bought both of them it took me no more than an hour really to go through them both just but casually £1.50 enrich the story a little bit mm. and like I said it cost me three quid for the two that's not horrendous for a couple of hours no and if the Batgirl DLC had cost somewhere near that, say four quid, I probably wouldn't have been as critical. Yeah. But the season pass for £35 makes a big deal. You get that content. Mm. 
Now, I don't know whether their original plan was to release it for £1.59, or whether the Batgirl DLC was supposed to release for as cheap as they did. Maybe they were planning on doing it for more, but have decided not to because they've got lots of confidence in it. (laughs) But I don't feel bad about not buying a season pass, even with the promise of the uh, the, uh, Burton Batman Mm. Batmobile, because I watched to do the racetrack, and I thought, really? I don't know if I'm going to play that for more than one lap of a racetrack. Unless they had like a multiplayer racing mode, I can't, I can't see myself touching it. So now I'm just waiting for whatever they're going to announce as the next piece of story DLC, which they shouldn't really announce anything until they've got the PC version working because it would annoy people to think that while they, they should be doing that. Out all this stuff for the console. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the racetracks are easy because you just take a graphic designer. Mm. They said the woman watched, or well, the woman, the woman, there was a female. Um, art designer mm-hmm. she watched the two Burton films and merged them together so it was you were kind of driving through a movie set right and there were different stages basically so you'd go down the street and they have the Joker balloons yep. and then you'd go into the Penguins underground lair and it'd be Penguins jumping off the and it looked very cool mm. but it's a couple of people's work yeah it's not a big job whereas you know if they are working on story DLC I would be annoyed if I was a PC owner mm. thinking hang on a minute why aren't you fixing the game I've paid for yeah Okay, you may have refunded me, but still, that's not the point. I kind of want to play yeah. that. Stop making new stuff mm. because they will wait. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, I mean, at the moment, like I say, I'm nine quid. I'm adding up everything I want to buy, and I will buy it individually. And I don't think it's ever going to come near thirty-five quid. No. And so, my advice is still wait for a sale on the season pass or buy the content you actually want. But the the two small pieces are worth playing through. Do you know what is good value? I discovered this week. Yeah. Episode one of the Wolf Among Us was free. Was it really? On the 360 marketplace. So I grabbed that. Really enjoyed the story. Typical Telltale glitches in there, especially the it's... penultimate scene in the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glitch to hell. Yeah. Awful. Ruined that whole segment, really. The whole, of, that, the the whole of those five chapters has that issue. It has a lot yeah. of juddery so moments as well. So I'm now at the point of, I have my new Microsoft account. I've finally got all that sorted. Microsoft, uh, the whole yeah. weird situation with it. So I have got money there. Do I spend £10 on the season pass? I would say no. What I would recommend is on the Xbox One, yep. they have a Telltale collection. Yep, that's what I was just about to say. And it's normally 70 quid. Right. But they've periodically reduced that to 35. 35 quid for both The Walking Deads, yep. plus 400 Days, plus Game of Thrones, plus The Borderlands, plus The Wolf Among Us. That's a lot of games for, for not a lot of quid. money. And they haven't fixed any of the issues, really. No. But it doesn't matter because so you've it's... got Game of Thrones, though, and Walking yeah. Dead 1 and at least part of 2. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, really, what I would like them to do one way or the other is announce backwards compatibility for more yeah. arcade games. Because if they give those as backwards compatible, then I don't need to buy mm. any more. Because I would consider buying the pack purely for Borderlands and Game of Thrones, which yeah. I haven't bought anything of, thinking, well, they're like 12 quid each. So that's 25 quid. Mm. So for an extra tenner, I'm getting all the other games Xbox One compatible, which is which is an incentive. Yeah. But if they're going to make it backwards compatible, mm. then it doesn't matter because I've already got them. Yeah. And I can save some money. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Lots of new stuff on the horizon, most of which will be playable about uh, EGX. Yeah. So let's talk about Eurogamer slash EGX. EGX, as it's now called. Because well, people don't know it as EGX, do they? No. Eurogamer Expo. Yes. Now in Birmingham. Yeah. Oh, here with the drummies. Yeah. Mm, no one's hearing it. It's not too bad, is it? That's the Ringo Starr. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> Yo, submarine. I think North. I think slightly dim. You think North? I think North. Ringo Starr. Yeah. Um, Why is but, he hawking shoes now? He's selling uh, sketches. Is he really? Yeah. He's... I'm sure he's probably running low on money now after that Luke Jay Thomas gig dried up on him. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I did get disappointed when the new Thomas film came out uh, Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure right starring uh, oh god I'm trying to his name now the guy who played Stephen Hawking uh, Eddie Redmayne Eddie Redmayne and John Hurt huh? with the big two stars along with Olivia Coleman no Ringo Starr oh. and so everybody's going in I was saying to the parents went enjoy your film there enjoy your film said Nathan and they were laughing, and the kids were just looking at me and saying, I've no idea why you're, that's funny. Stop talking to that weirdo, <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> what, what voice is that? Stop talking to that And boy. then I remembered that they've not had Ringo Starr on Thomas for a long mm-hmm. time. Sad, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, that film, no Ringo at all. But there are lots of games that you're a game, and we're going on the Thursday. Yes. Possibly again at the weekend. Possibly. Depending on whether people are going to be offering us drink. Mm. 
because you know or just going to be there for us to meet up with I'll settle for that that, that, that seems a fair compromise yeah. so if you're going to be there on a Saturday or the Sunday let us know or the and Thursday then, even well the Thursday we're definitely going we are that's not we don't care if people it's are not going negotiable. or not it'd be nice if people are there but we're there to work mm. the weekend we've got, we're there to play yep because we work hard and we play hard yep we are the lover cost <laughs> coming in your ears <laughs> and we will if on the Saturday if you not not like that uh, but we'll be chatting to you yeah like we did at MGPX mm. uh, I was listening to the Player 2 cast and they were very complimentary about you yeah a little bit complimentary about me but they couldn't bring themselves to say how much they really like me yeah just that I made them feel very welcome yeah which, which was the important part and that's something we like to do so we'll be there on Thursday to play some games but mm. what games Rob what games are available oh. Ones they have currently announced as being playable. Can I do this, like a huzzah or a boo? If you want to. Actually, should we both just say whether we're excited or not for each yeah. title? You read them and then I'll react, then you okay. react, then I'll read These the are the ones one. they've currently announced as being playable okay. uh, at EGX, yeah. Eurogamer 2015. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Yeah. Eh. Saying that, I've, every time I played... I dropped this, out the Assassin's Creed series at three. And every so, time I've played Assassin's Creed at EGX... Or Yuri Air Expo. I've always been a bit disappointed that I didn't get to play the game for longer. So I probably won't so, bother playing it. But I'm very excited to see it running. Yeah. Because I want to see how London, Victorian London Comes looks. Because it looks beautiful from mm. the stills and some of the videos. Yeah. So the trailer looked pretty Also, pretty they, did, they did a lot of promo work for this earlier in the year. When it was E3, they actually opened up little barbershop things in London. Mm-hmm. Where you could go in and get like temporary tattoos yeah. and stuff. So they've got a bit of a budget to promote this. So all those costumes exist in mm. London. So it could be that they'll have a lot of people dressed up, which yeah. I quite like. Yeah. So that would be good. Like, nice touch. FIFA 16. FIFA, new FIFA. Fuck all 16, well <laughs> I. <laughs> I. I enjoy the, an odd game of FIFA. I very rarely buy the newest edition just because it's not worth spending Interestingly, £40 pounds on. Interestingly, the, uh, the digital copy of that at the mm. moment on CD key is only £37. Pound, That's not bad. Which is cheaper than the retail copy mm. will be. So... I could quite, I could quite go for more of these, like Gears of War. As I mentioned, mm. I'm buying that digital. It's twenty nine ninety nine digital or yeah. twenty nine ninety nine on disc. Well, hmm. let me think for a second. Which one do I want to be poking in and out for half an hour? Definitely be buying the digital version. Yeah. So, right, Homefront: The Revolution. Very excited for this. I am. I didn't play the first one. No, but what I've seen of this one definitely has my interest. The first one had a lot of really good little features. Mm. A See, lot of the which thing at home front, the, the whole concept should have been right up my street. I just never got around to no, playing. A lot of people didn't, and then in THQ went bust. Yeah, and so it kind of fell on the forefront. And I'm glad this one happened because they look like they've taken their time and actually come out with something that reacts to it. Because it does look like Far Cry mixed with Call of Duty, mm. which is great. Yeah, I don't mind that. That's I'm fine with that as well. Um, just Cause Three. Mm. Uh, I've got Just Cause 2 via Games with Gold, so I need to give that a proper play. I but again, the, the idea behind the whole Just Cause series does intrigue me, that sandboxy type. So what I remembered after, after I wrote my article saying about how you can hold on to a gas cylinder and fly to the moon, um, you could sort of do that in Just Cause 2. You could shoot a grapple gun at it and shoot it, and it would fire up and it would drag you behind it on the street, uh-huh. which was almost as cool as holding on to it, yep. but not quite. So yeah, interesting to see where that goes, especially with the Xbox One all the next gen technology so. yeah and multiplayer as well mm. which was crazy on the PC version yep I can imagine Mirror's Edge Catalyst this is probably the game I'm most interested to play mm. because they said it's a big open world this time there's no linear element mm. and I don't know how that'll work because the linear like element Edge. was almost like a it was almost like Portal yeah where it was there was a set there was a set start and end but you could kind of vary how you got yeah. there a little bit but the point was there was a set start and end and there was very clear signposts as to where to keep going yeah if it's a big open world oh we're going to have very intrusive head up display because that's what Mirror's Edge didn't have mm. it was pretty much you knew roughly where you wanted to go because you followed the red markers and you were just trying to keep the pace up to yeah. get there as quick as possible so I'm interested because I loved Mirror's Edge I have doubts about how it's going to play in an open world and that's something you can only work out by hands on yeah. time so that one I'd probably be first in line for cool. Need for Speed? yeah I, I, I don't think I've played a Need for Speed game for years I, go love, back to PlayStation 2. I love the Need for Speed franchise but really, this one not appeal to me that much. I don't know what it is mm. it's because it's a reboot 
and they seem to have had elements from underground and undercover mixed together. Uh, the last one I really enjoyed, the um, Rivals. Yep. I really like that. So, I don't know, it's on EA Access, which I also bought yeah. again this week because I thought my girlfriend on holiday, Dragon Age Inquisition was added to it. Oh. So I thought £6 to play that for a month. Yeah. I'll do that. I haven't touched it. Oh. I haven't even installed it. Mm. But, never mind. <laughs> yeah. uh, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Do I need to say how excited I am for that? I think we can anticipate that you might be quite excited for that. I am very excited. I don't know if I'll play it because I don't need convincing. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like when it comes to strategies for Eurogamer, mm. never queue for something you know you're going to buy yeah. unless you're like an absolute die-out fan. Like if Fallout 4 gets announced as playable, yes, of course we're going to play yeah. it. Right. Fighting people together. And we'll, you know, physically. But that's because we don't want to wait until it yeah. actually comes out. And the same happens with Call of Duty. Everybody wants to be the first to yeah. play Call of Duty. I get that. But with things like Garden Warfare 2, the trailers are enough Give and the gameplay an of the first is enough. Mm. And I know it's going to be about 20 quid. Yep. And I know I'm getting it. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully it will, people will play it and mm. love it. Because that's the It's to convince people, really, who don't play it. But who's going to queue up for an hour to play a game that they think is a childish baby's game? Mm. God of Warfare always gets this from yeah. COD fans. They're like, oh, it's a stupid baby game. But it's really not. <laughs> Played it again this week. Fucking love it. It's as good as multiplayer shooting mm. gets. And they're still doing community events. Mm. I logged in at the end of a community event which was to kill the large behemoth right. zombies and I think they said they'd killed something like 50 million of them between all the online games wow. in a fortnight yeah. so there's a big community still playing that game and everybody got a reward for mm. taking part so yeah Star Wars Battlefront yeah speaking of games we'll probably end up buying so <laughs> should we play them I think I probably will try and have a go at this I want to have a go at this more for the fact that there might be something Star Wars related as a freebie if you play it Ooh. Titanfall when they did that EA yeah. did that they and gave out little Hitman figures a couple of years ago yeah so Titanfall they gave the patches yep iron on patch I am i wouldn't want to risk not getting a Star Wars freebie I think I just want to play so. just Battlefront and... see I don't really like the Battlefront games I just love the Battlefront games yeah oh. I love Battlefront. I'm really looking forward to this one but never Battlefront however the trailer for the dogfight mode yep. absolutely has me hooked there you go like, I don't want to play on the ground I just want to be a TIE fighter pilot I just want to be a TIE fighter. Excellent versus TIE fighter. That was a good game. Yeah, but imagine yeah. that in the world of Battlefront mm. and with the power of next gen. Yeah. It's going to be phenomenal and I hope they've got that playable. Mm. Well, it I, says here it's playable. No, I mean the, oh, fighter, the squadron fighter squadron mode. Fighter squadron Because some of my favourite games are things like X, uh, See, Star Wars I wonder Wars, how Rogue they squadron will do that as well. Will they just set up two banks of consoles? So you've got Rebels Empire and then it'll just be a random level a set yeah, usually. Pitch. Yeah, usually. You know, that's how it works. Will it all just be Hoth, Team A, Team B, go, end of game, piss off, next group, sit down. Normally they all have one level. Yeah. So it'll be the same level for everyone because I'm just it's easier to gauge. Them, yeah. With Titanfall, they they just took you through 16 mm. at a time or whatever it was, 8 at a time, and you went in and they did that right actually because it was a big queue of Titanfall. Yeah. I waited an hour and 40 minutes to play mm. that. And when you're about an hour in, you've got to sit down mm. and they put a film on for you for 10 minutes and you watched a, how to play the game. And that was the best thing in the world. Yeah. Because it was a completely new concept and it showed you all the basic elements. So when you got the game, you already had a rough idea. Yeah. What you, did. you didn't have that. You didn't oh, have got, to have that tutorial. You've got one go situation. and you're not sitting there going, oh, what do I do? Like straight away, you pushing just buttons get on. to see what everything does, yeah. and it will accidentally kill yourself. And I, st- I started that. I ran. I jumped on a wall. I wall ran immediately because the game had already told me yeah. in that little film. So they could do something like that with Star Wars because they know there's going to be a queue. Gamescom, they had an attack walker yep. built, and they had something else as well. I forget what the other thing was. It may have been a crash deck swing. I can't remember. But they had some big set stuff yeah. they built. So I'd quite like to see an Endor fight or a Celest. Which they've talked about being. I wonder if they go for Hoth, playable. just because it's such a classic battle, and yeah. it features vehicles as well. It does. It does. Um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Mm. But I, I suppose just... Endor could have speeder bikes. Yeah, it'd have speeder bikes. Then you'd have the Battle of Endor above it, mm. potentially. So, and you've got the uh, if you go slightly above the trees, you've got all sorts. You've got ATSTs mm. and Atats because the Atat travels with Darth Vader on yep. it in the film. So, yeah, there's, there's loads of potential for stuff. 
but we will see when we play it. Um, the Assembly. I know absolutely jack shit No, neither do I. And I'm looking at who made it. I don't even End know dreams. anything. It sounds familiar, but I couldn't tell you anything about it. So let's have a little Google. I am. Popping it open here. Do, 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 do. Oh, it sounds interesting, doesn't it? Well, will you draw the line. The Assembly, a mysterious organisation hidden from the world, has been experimenting outside the constraints of government scrutiny. It's a VR game. Morals. It's right. a VR game. I remember this now. There's a dead crow as a picture. Yeah. And a, a man looking it's, sad. There's oh, not, yeah, virtual reality experience. There yeah, go. there's yeah, not yeah. a lot had been said about yeah. it, but yeah, it's coming out in the Morpheus. Platform, and Morpheus, the op- Oculus Rift, HEC, Vive, story-led adventure coming soon. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, I've heard little right. bits about it, but I didn't know that was the assembly. I just read about it as something else. But yeah. as soon as you started describing it, first public hands-on will be it. See, I'd quite like to try that because again, it's one of those things where if it's something, see, this is the other thing. Like, don't play the stuff you already know about. Mm. Go to the indie game sections and play stuff like playing Montague's Mount, and I've played Gang Beast. Like Gang Beast is doing really well on PC. Double Fine, uh, the Tim Schafer mm. company, they picked it up and published it. It's a phenomenal game. It's basically giant jelly babies yep. in an arena causing massive damage. And it's kind of... Have you ever played Surgeon Simulator? No. But you've seen it where it's like really clunky yeah. and difficult. Basically, you kind of, you, you've got a grab option. And you can kind of like then just move and ram people through windows and drop them in fire mm. pits and stuff. It was great fun. I played that at Rezd and then it got huge. Mm. And then when I saw it at Eurogamer later that year, I was talking to a couple of developers who was saying that there was actually a bidding war over that game. All those different publishers wanted it. And, you know, as you're scrolling through these yeah, games now... Loads of the, of the I mean, there's names. loads where names just go, mean nothing because yeah. we don't know about them. Yeah. But any of these could be the next great mm. indie game. And Be- these Bears are those... can't drift. And do you know what else you'll find? These will have the people who made them with it. Mm, I remember. Not PR years. people who just go, yeah, just take your turn, please. Here's your freebie. Go away. Guns of Icarus. Guns of Icarus is very good. I have played Iron that. Iron Fish. Nature's zombie, Nature's zombie apocalypse. apocalypse. I'm very keen to play yep. that. Punch Club. It's a uh, twin stick shooter. Uh, Zomboid, yeah, is some very nice people make that. Onikira, Demon Killer. Um, I think he's there as well again. Prison Architect. And <laughs> I think War for the Overworld is there again, as they always are. But... RPG Tycoon. Hello. What? Yeah, see? Yeah. But there's lots of stuff there that actually should be, should be mm. a good look. And they know, there's never massive cues for them. Yep. And the left field stuff is quite exciting as well. Um, Galactose Intolerant is what yep. I'm looking for. That's one that always catches my eye because it's kind of like a walking shark thing. Yeah, it's a shark horse. Shark horse, so, okay. so quite I also fun. want to play Man or Go just because the title the looks title. Quite interesting. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. So, like, of so, the big games, we have skipped a couple there as we tend to wander off. Yeah, so both in Tom Clancy. Mm. Roma Six Siege, we mentioned. Which I'm quite keen to actually play. Especially given the fact they've delayed it. Mm. Because I mean, this coincides with the uh, closed beta as well, 24th. Yeah. So, I, see, I haven't ever really been into the Rainbow Six games. I've always been in with, I've always played them with people who are really into them, but mm. I always end up throwing a grenade at my feet and dying quite quickly. Yeah. But I always enjoyed it, even though it wasn't enjoyable. Mm. It was very stressful. Yeah. And this seems even more stressful because it's a siege situation. Mm rather than just taking on terrorists in a casino. This is like you're at a building and they've got hostages yeah. and you need to do the right thing. But then that could also be an incredible experience with the right players. Yeah. Now that's the issue I've got with a hands-on at a game show. Mm. Nobody's played the game before. Everybody's going to be a bit... Hey. So the, what they've done in the past, um, Alien Colonial Marines, I think it was, had multi- good multiplayer mm. and they had... The developers playing as the aliens. That's the first time anybody said alien clone marines and good in the same sentence. <laughs> but the multiplayer was solid. Mm. I'm sure it was that it was what it was. And um, yes, it was because when I got my lanyard, my whaling YouTube yep. lanyard, and they had yeah they had the developers playing as the aliens because they're very complicated to control. You're up on the walls mm. and 360 degree platform. So the idea was most people who play it have played a first person shooter. Yep. So you're the grunt, and actually the aliens should be very dangerous. Yeah, but in reality terms, if you see an alien shoot it a few times, it will die. Mm. So having the developers right meant the, the kind of the risk yeah. was higher. Unfortunately, that's what was wrong with the game. Really, the AI just wasn't good enough, mm. and uh, so that played well. So maybe with Siege, they could have a couple of like stool pigeons just sat yeah. there going, "Like right, we're in there with you. I'll help coordinate or whatever." I doubt they will. They'll mm. probably just let people play it. Um, and then and then the division. Yeah, 
which I've been keeping an eye on. The original trailer teaser intrigued a lot of people. It uh, did. And then the next news uh, video that came out did make it look a little bit generic, maybe. Yeah. And so, I don't want to say it diminished anticipation, but it created a little bit of caution. I think I was expecting more of a survival horror experience. Yeah. And it seemed to be more, uh, you're a soldier in a war zone experience. Yeah. Uh, and so, it's been pushed back to 2016, which isn't a massive surprise. I think a lot of people thought having it out this year was always a bit ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but to get hands, I'm keen to get hands on with it hmm. to see is it a, you know a post apocalyptic war zone shooter or is there a bit more to it? Yeah, as oh. they sort of hinted at. We will know. Sorry, I just banged you on. I it ruined the whole recording then. now. iPad, i thing, MacBook, iMacBook. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so they're they're the main titles that are playable at EGX. Yeah. So we'll be headed up there with our trusty cameraman mm. and his little boy. Um, who's got no idea what he's in for no. really <laughs> he doesn't listen to this either <laughs> can he carry Ooh. can he carry three coffees he probably could well there we go he's fine he's sorted and I don't drink coffee yeah. so two coffees and a coke no. be fine uh, so yeah so we'll be leaving quite early because mm. we want to get there nice and early uh, we'll be on press passes he's just got a regular pass we'll have to wait an hour but luckily the location has got a bar and yeah. restaurants and things so we'll be alright then we'll meet up again with him. He's going to be gopro it up. Yep. So hopefully I'm going to borrow the GoPro off him for a while. Mm. Perhaps while he's not in there. I might borrow that and just film the hour that yep. he's not there. They go, <laughs> The hour it takes us to get through look, security look and explain why we've got well, a camera. This, this is the actual... What are you doing with that? Nothing. <laughs> What do you mean? At Eurogamer, the press having a camera, that's immediately going to arouse suspicion, isn't it? <laughs> is it more like, what? 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 <laughs> well, I'm off of suspicion and I'm what aroused have, by your camera. Why have you got a child with you? Yeah. The child labour laws don't count here, mate. Yeah. This is private property. Um, He's so got yeah. stringy muscles, he can carry more freebies. We'll be leaving early. Uh, we may arrange a time to go to Webspoons, because mm-hmm. there's Webspoons on site. Yep. And so we will... Probably set up a, a time. So anybody who's going on Thursday, get in touch now, and then we'll arrange a meet-up somewhere. Um, other than that, maybe again at the weekend. Mm. So like I said, let us know where you're going, Saturday or Sunday or both, and then we will try and get there for one of those days. Now, mm. just before I get on to my next subject, have you ever watched the TV series Whitechapel? No. Keep right. intending to. Never caught up. Do you know what? I've watched the first two series of that this week. <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely amazing. We watched Fortitude. Yeah. That was on Sky Atlantic. Also excellent. Yeah. Great thriller. That's on my on my list once it yep. comes on to other things. Um, but yeah, I, I watched this. I think uh, one of my former work colleagues, Si Ming, found it on a uh, pirate website. Si Ming? Si Ming is Chinese. But he's into all the sort of TV shows and films and stuff we are. So uh, I, every now and again, we'll just randomly text each other and go, this is good. Yeah. Uh, what, and that was what, the one. I said, uh, if, you, I if you're into, what, looking for a good thriller, Fortitude. He's like, okay. And he oh. found it on one of these hooky websites. And yeah. So I got a thumbs up text back. <laughs> First series of Whitechapel was a Jack Ripper copycat. Is killer. that the one with Rupert Rupert Penry Jones, Jones Phil Daniels, and uh, Steve Pemberton? Yeah. It's Rupert Penry Jones' yeah. face. I was like, is that? that so, yeah. One? So a guy's eerily copycatting yep. Jack the Ripper. Really, really well put together. It was a three part series. The second one was The Craze. Right. One of the Craze seemed to come back from the dead. I'm inter- slightly veering off topic. I'm interested to see. The new Tom Hardy film, Legend. Oh, Legend. Does look very good. Yep. Although they are weirding me out a little bit because they're advertising it on 12A films. So I'm a bit concerned as to... do get trailers which are... But I want that to be an 18, and they wouldn't mm. advertise an 18, so that means it's going to be a 15. Uh, you can still you can still. Crazy the Gary Kemp was a 18. Yeah. The sword scene, if nothing else, demands we'll see. it. We'll see where they go with But it does look I did like uh, the jokes we put on Twitter early. Uh, Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy is Chris Morris and Hanra Hanrahan in the day to day movie. So that was very good. It's uh, yeah, it's very good. But third series doesn't seem to be a straight copycat of a very famous crime. Right. The sus- the prime suspect at the end of the first episode, which I watched just before leaving, David Schneider, Whoa. off of the day to day and other things, the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was fucking terrifying. Yeah. Like, I don't ever want him to do anything other than comedy ever again. Oh. Like, he's Uncle Max off <laughs> of children's TV. Like, he's, he's absolutely creepy as fuck. Like, he's got a vibe where he's almost like Tombs on X Files. Yeah. It kind of suggests he might be a bit like him mm. because they put him in a prison cell and he has uh, 
like a light phobia. You know, right. where you, like, your skin feels like it's burning if you yeah. get the sunlight on you. So they put him in a cell, and he lies on his bed, and he sings, he says that, uh, if I die before I wake, I pray the love of my soul to take. And then he taunts the guard at the end of the thing, who's they're just praying for his life. Mm. And you just hear him laughing. And then they go to check, and he's disappeared from his cell. Oh. And it was just like, oh Christ, he really is like Tombs Off the Exiles, oh. which then made me even more frightened, because Tombs Off the Exiles was terrifying. So David Schneider as Tombs Off the X-Files, yeah. potentially, going around murdering people. They yeah. say it just appears in darkness. Oh. So uh, I can't wait to watch the rest of it. I'm going to watch more tonight. David Schwimmer watch. appears as a cigarette-smoking man. <laughs> or, just, or just Armando Inucci with yeah. tiny Tony Blair, little yeah. Tony Blair, just in the background. <laughs> Did you kill those people? Tell Mr. Tony Blair. Yeah. It's... Uh... It's a, that would be amazing if ever Tony Blair was called to stand for war crimes and Mr. Tony Blair turned up in the dock. Instead of him. Instead of him. They'd arrested the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got him! It's just like cop style. Oh, Christ. First person they really. Need, I was watching some Friday Night Hours this the other day. They need to bring that back. I don't think they ever could. I think there's too many political comedy things now. Then it was know. pretty much just Have I Got News You and Drop Their Donkey were the two big kind of yeah. critical things. And of course, Amanda Iannucci's gone off to do Veep and things like that. Yeah. As well. But I think it was very much of its time, and it was them at the height of their brilliance. Mm. I don't think they'd get the freedom to do what they did again. I mean, when they flew a helicopter over the Millennium Dome and dropped leaflets down to the builders saying there's better jobs elsewhere and stuff like that. Yeah. It was genius. And. Uh, Steve, what killed that was Tony Blair winning. Well, if you hadn't won that election, then they could have kept that joke going for years. I don't think that was the only thing that kept that show going, though. No, it wasn't. They could you know have had. I mean? They could have had. Because uh, that was the last one. The election at Armistice. They did a Millennium Party. Of course, the they last did. one. They did, and yeah, then they did like a, a, a clip show. I think it was in the January. They did a clip show of the best uh, of. But that was it. But yeah, it was the ele- the party. Yeah. Like Armistice. But uh, yeah, such good, such good TV. But now in the modern age, I mean, you just have to read their Twitter feeds. It's yeah. pretty much that all the time. They should, they should just release that as a show. Like when Adam Buxton does his, uh, was it Click? Bug. Bug, where he just does YouTube comments. I saw... Uh, <laughs> Which it is, that's all that show is. Yeah. Um, uh, Jimmy Kimmel in America, the yeah, late yeah. night talk show. There was a, a skit he put on his Twitter feed, which I saw yesterday. Uh, Josh Groban sings the tweets of Donald Trump. And that was actually extremely funny. He does a few. He did yeah. one which was... Kanye um, West. Nick Offerman, yep, from reading Park's reading very feminine mm. pop stars tweets, and one I know it was um, like Nickelodeon TV stars and Disney yeah. Channel TV stars, and one of was like, and he's like chops a massive piece of wood, yeah. puts the axe on his shoulder, he went. Sometimes I just want to put lipstick all over my face, <laughs> and then goes back to it, and it's uh, yeah, him just sarcastically reading tweets. He does it a lot, and it's always brilliant because people are going for it. Um, but yeah, so. Whitechapel thoroughly recommend to anybody yeah. on, who can get hold of it yeah, I know it is on Netflix I think it was on Amazon Prime Video I think it's on the Skybox yeah it's probably well. on there because it was a BBC series mm. so they tend to get out everywhere so do that now let's talk about Amiquo yes yeah, so or you can talk about Amiquo because it's got you quite excited yeah so basically these are four little figures um, two of which have got long hair and play guitars mm-hmm. and it's basically <laughs> rocking all over the world yeah in the Wii U yeah no, it's not. It's not a no, version you. status quo. Ah. <laughs> no, this is uh, basically an R4 card mm. for Amiibo data. Yes. Now, we talked about the Amiibo cards. We have. And about how much that was going to cost me. Yes. <laughs> We've now potentially got a solution for that mm. problem. We've potentially saved you up to £1,000. <laughs> saved, saved me splitting up with my partner and mm. living destitute under a kidneys. bridge like a troll. Uh, so Amiibo basically is a little plug-in USB device, yep. for the look of it that stores data that you would usually find in the near-field communication chip on Amiibo figures or cards. Yep. The storage of up to a 1,000 characters, I think it was, they said. And, yeah, basically, you, it can trick your Wii U at new 3DS or 3DS with the portal into thinking you've got that figure sat on mm. there. So if you don't care about collecting Nintendo figures, you can still unlock all the extra content, mm. the races, the costumes, and it's only 50 quid, which is a lot for a device, but... Not if you're going to spend comparison. all that money on the Amiibos, yeah, you, you've probably yeah. worth it. So, and I don't know how they could stop the device from working. Because if it's able to broadcast the same signal, then in theory, they couldn't block it without ruining the figures. Mm. So it's not like the 
R4 card where they could just block the use of it. Yeah. Because this is essentially something that will sit on top mm. of a device. So um, it's a very... I'd be watching this on pre-order at the moment. I'm watching this with great interest. I shall wait until that Animal Crossing cards thing comes out. Yeah. Until I decide. But uh, yeah, it's it's certainly balancing out the game for people because I do resent the fact that if I want to buy Yoshi's Woolly World and have all the characters I've got to spend 750 quid on figures mm. don't want to do that so this could be a solution um, in the meantime I have been playing Rare Replay yes I noticed you popped that on there again we talked yeah. about it a little bit last week it's glorious Rob most of it I've been playing on uh, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts yep. as Postman Gav messaged me I said, think a lot of people have been doing the same <laughs> uh, well Postman Gav said I was absolutely right to nail it as a almost perfect game because it is hmm. it's got its minor flaws but on the whole it is just brilliant in game form uh, and I think at one point there were 12 people on my friends list playing it out of just over 100 so it's yeah, it gets you, and you want to keep playing. And the kids, what was very good for the kids is all the cloud save data transferred over, so they were able to play wherever they want, and they've still got their gameplay. Um, the rest of the game, or the sort of the collection as such, is rounded out by twenty nine other games that they made. Games that some of them are not that great in hindsight. Mm. Blast Core still very very good, but. Nostalgia you, tints it a little bit. No, no, no. The gameplay is still brilliant, but by God, it makes you realise. You know, like when you look back at a PS1 game, you mm-hmm. think, "Oh, how did I ever think this was the future of gaming?" Because you're looking at some very ropey effects. It's just like how you um, realise how pointy Lara Croft's boobs once were. Because yeah, I mean, this is basically just the N64 was muddy and dirty looking. Mm. Like most of it was just gritty little graphics that didn't really look very pretty, especially compared to what Nintendo usually do. They're usually very crisp and colourful. The other problem you've got now is you've got flat screen HD TVs. You, you have. I mean, they do allow you to, like I say, they do allow you, I said before, you can play it on a more realistic TV mode. mode. Mm. But making it look worse is not a solution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, but having so, some sort of weird mode to try and screen that isn't really yeah. a solution. <laughs> but it still, it still plays brilliantly. I mean, the, the gameplay is solid. It's just... Not, Graphical power, isn't there? Yeah. And so I'm glad they didn't just give them a polish because mm. that's not respectful as a retro collection. That's almost I'm saying, like, there you go. The, the, my second favourite game on there is a game I'd never played previously, Battletoads right. Arcade. Yeah. I don't think I've ever played Battletoads. I remember it. I played Battletoads I on the NES. I remember reading that in like, Games went, Master. Yeah, games. I went to a friend's house and played the infamous sewer level on mm. Battletoads, which just did me in. Um, <laughs> Battletoads Arcade played like the Simpsons Arcade and Turtles Arcade. It was one of those side-scrolling brawlers. Oh, just great. I mean, visuals, it had that kind of era of 90s, big, chunky sprites. Uh, yeah, it was great. And I love playing it. It was hard. It was rock hard. But it, it just reminded me of how much I used to love. There was a Dungeons & Dragons one, like Knights of the Round or something like that, mm. that I used to play. And uh, Heroes of something as well, which I adored. But every time I used to go to Butlins, I'd always play these brawlers. Because mm. I always felt you got more money's value. Yeah. Like Pac-Man, you die three times, you're out. Those, you could play for a good 20 minutes before you died. And you'd actually accomplish something. You'd yeah. just run around eating dots. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm making very slow progress through the, the game because they're all grabbing me. Mm. Not by the ghoulies, because mm. that game's still awful. Yeah. Um, I'm not even bothered. I, just, I remember playing it once. I bought it because I never had the original Xbox. Mm. When the 360 was back, was but I bought the disc on a car boot yeah. for a pound, put it in, played it for 20 minutes. I was like, no, never want to play that again. I will have to play it to get the achievements. Yeah. But one guy's got all the achievements. Already. Th- one, he's the only person in the world who's done it. He's a massive tool, though, because he messaged Rare yep. and went, I'm the first person to finish it. And it was like, all right. And some people were congratulating. Some people were saying, well, what's the point of bragging about that? Then he went, I think I should get something, like a signed console or something. It's like, um... They should, what? You know what they should come up with? I think you should get a job. <laughs> right. Well, then he showed the rest of his house. Mm. He's got basically a Rare collection Right. of original consoles and games. I mean, he yeah. is literally the most obsessive Rare fan I've ever seen in my right. life. And, uh, yeah, he was like, oh, I should get something for doing this. I was like, well, to be fair... It's your you've, choice. You've played all those games so many times, that probably wasn't a challenge. Mm. Like, you've not really overcome any odds. Yeah. You've just played games you enjoy that you've played hundreds of times before. That's not something you need rewarding for. Like, the people who've never played a Rare game before are the people who should be rewarded. 
So, yeah, I didn't respond to him personally because lots of mm. people were. <laughs> but I don't know where Rare will do something. Mm. But they oh, also said. He might, he might end up as one of those DWP stories. Possibly. <laughs> they also said they're going to potentially add new games via DLC. Right. Which is also quite exciting. Because they mentioned before. Yeah, so they've got Conquer's Bad Day. Mm. They're now looking at potentially doing Conquer Live and. Reloaded, live and loaded, live yeah, and live and loaded. I think it yeah, was. which is the Xbox Online game. Uh, so they're saying that's potentially they can add that on. That would be great if they if they could start adding them on, work out the licensing issues, because potentially they could get Bond. Hmm. It's a, a chance. Yeah, um, but it would never happen. <laughs> but it's, mm. a, it's a chance, and it's, it's nice to have that. Yeah. But also the fact they could just put some of their older games. They said they had to whittle the list down to thirty. I mean, once Spectre's been and gone, and the Bond. I would say Bond Fever tails off a little bit well, again. Well, the thing. Maybe we, they'll feel differently. I, I haven't seen a Spectre game announced. No. I don't think one came out for Skyfall. Uh, no, the last games they did... Was it the F- FPS that kind of ran up to... They had Quantum Solace. Then Solace. they had Bloodstone. I don't think they did anything since Bloodstone. No. And that wasn't tied in with the film anyway, was it? That, no. Was that the FPS I'm thinking of? Where you worked your way through the different levels... As the different films as levels, Legends, oh, okay. 007 Legends. Legends. That was the last one they did. Right. Yeah, that was fucking horseshit. That was. Oh Christ, that was. I just, bad. I just remember it being like you're now Roger Moore. Now you're Daniel no, Craig. No, you weren't. Oh, you you know, were Daniel know. Craig in all of them. That was what made it worse. They reimagined right. all oh, the I different thought it films. Was like, right, so no, now no, you play no. Sean Connery, then you move on to Roger Moore. No. So like, you're so you're basically what they've done is they've retrofitted all of the old Bond films, updated the settings, and put you in as Bond right. as James Craig. And it ruined it. So you're having like a fist fight in a cable car with Telly Savalas. Yeah. And you're Daniel Craig. So it's like, surely it wouldn't have been that difficult to make it look a bit like George Lazenby. Mm. But no, not doing that. It was, it was very weird. Yeah. And it wasn't good. Oh, I missed some of the concept. Completely. Yeah. There's one mission where you walk through a room, and I think it was one of the earlier ones. I think it was based on Goldfinger, potentially. I can't remember which one. But there's a, like a, bar, a swimming pool. Mm. Was there a woman painted gold? Area. No. Oh, it wasn't Goldfinger then. <laughs> there, was, there might have been later. But you couldn't walk through any of that area. You had to, you hit an invisible wall if you tried to. Oh, and man. there was like little tiny steps. You couldn't go over those steps. You could only go... So, oh, it's terrible. And oh, I, I love Destiny. Bond. I got stuck on small rocks. Like become legend, yeah. stuck on a rock. Fuck off. And it's, they Stop. had... Um, some of the boss fights were like quick time events and it wouldn't show you on screen what you had to push. Or it wouldn't tell you what gadget you need to use. So you just have to randomly try things and then it would set off an alarm and you die. And you're just like, I don't know what this is. Mm. It was, oh, it was an awful game. And yeah, because they had Skyfall in that as a mission, I remember now. Right. It came out just before it and they said, when the film's out, we'll do a mission based on Skyfall. Mm. I never played it because I, I think I burnt the disc in a fire at that point. <laughs> but, <laughs> worth trading in. <laughs> it's, I bought it at launch. Some, somebody else will buy it. I have to burn and it. And I was so looking forward to it because the idea of playing classic Bond levels. Mm. Because they did From Russia With Love on the PS2, which was phenomenally good. You played as Sean Connery. I think they even had his likeness and voice for that. Yeah. And it was great. And uh, I thought it was going to be that. And then when it came out to be Daniel Craig, it's just like, what? you're messing with the classics now. Like, I'll go on record and say, after Spectre, and they've set up Blofeld as a character mm. and Spectre as an organisation, there isn't much stopping them remaking the old books. Yeah. Like, I'd love that. Them to do Man With A Golden Gun in today's climate mm. like update all of that because they can yeah. like, the films weren't close to the books at all mm. the, Bond was a drunk violent nasty person mm. in the books and some of them went wildly like Moonraker yeah. couldn't have been more different mm. <laughs> if it tried so I, I don't know I'd kind of like the next Bond films to be based on the old books I do Man with a Golden Gun do Live and Let Die don't get Paul McCartney to do any song but you know hey go for that it. was a good song man it's a good song when Guns N' Roses did it. Um, and my friend is working on with a company that's making the Bond title sequence for Spectre. Oh. Spoiler, it involves ink. Potentially squid ink or octopus ink. Uh. That's, uh, so that's a thing. But he's been trying to find out who's sung the Bond theme because there's still betting open on it. Ooh. So he's trying to work out. So I've given him some advice, one of which is, oh, I can't believe Ellie Golding got the gig. And then wait <laughs> to see what somebody's response is. Because if they're like, uh-huh. You, obviously it's not Ellie Golden if they're like oh yeah you know that as well then go and put a £100 bet on immediately <laughs> like, so I might know next week and I'll leak it on this show that'll get some downloads won't it 
Oh, imagine that. Like, yeah, if you want to win a £1,000 off of a bookies, listen to this podcast. you want to get my friend fired and win yourself a bet? Oh, he's on a trial. It won't matter. Um, <laughs> what, a 30 day trial? <laughs> no, he's on a, he's on a uh, work placement. He's working as a runner. Yeah. So he's, he's had some very exciting adventures yeah. already. Like, every time I talk to him, he's like, the stuff I can't tell you about, the stuff is just too weird not to tell you. And so, yeah, one minute he's running to fetch two bottles of specific water yeah. for a producer who won't drink anything other than this water. Yeah. And the next minute he's working on a bond for the sequence. So, yeah. yeah, quite interesting. But yeah, the maker of the sequence claims she doesn't know what song is, but I thought that makes it difficult to edit to, surely. Yeah. <laughs> like, you must have a rough idea. Unless they've just got, like, um, the Stephen Hawking machine to play, sing the lyrics. Yeah. And they just play into a piece of music. Because I suppose they could do that without the lyrics over the top. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so Squid Ink, it mm. looks like, or Octopus Ink, it looks like it's going to be the main theme of the titles. Mm. Which, if that comes true... My mate's definitely working with people who are working on the Bond type scenes. Yeah. If it doesn't come true, He's my mate's full of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so we've, that's how I can find out, yeah. and then I will never talk He's to him again. He's working on a new Uve Bowl film, he just doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> no, because he quit, didn't he? He said he's never going to do crowdfunding again, and he blamed everybody. He'll be back. <laughs> he'll be back. Of course he'll be back. Um, but yeah, so in short, Rare Replay, brilliant. I'd love to talk more about it. But, but to we be have to honest, talk about other people who do films doing other things. No, but with Rare Replay, I've only played like three games on it because they're so good. Mm. I don't want to play the others yet. I want to savour it. I want to keep it going for as long as possible. And it's just incredible value. Like I said, the digital version was 20 quid. Mm. I'd pay that just for nuts and bolts. <laughs> and I did, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's fabulous. Um, so, yeah. yeah. What about other directors? Tim Burton's turning on the Blackpool Illuminations. <laughs> Oh, great. Well, <laughs> well, he did film his new film there, mm. the uh, the orphanage thing, the children's home film with Samuel L. Jackson in it. Because I remember Samuel L. Jackson t- uh, tweeting a, or Instagramming a picture of him out of his window going, first look at Blackpool. And it really was it wasn't even the tower. It was just a bit of sea. Yeah. So I've had it with this motherfucking... Town. circus in this I motherfucking tower. I need another drink to get over this news. <laughs> Alright, you go and get another drink and I'll talk to these people about Tim Burton. I'm not really going to talk about Tim Burton now. While he's in the house, um, I just thought I'd let you know that when Rob records, he's wearing giant Simpson slippers. It's really weird. It's off-putting. So yeah, Tim Burton is a cracker. He's a cracker man. Oh, you bought me some drink. Thank you very much. Stop staring at a revolution against me. I wasn't staring at a revolution against anything, actually. I think you'll find. Liar. In fact, I was furnishing people with accurate details about things... But yeah, really bad. So uh, yeah, um, Tim Burton is going to be switching lights on. He said it's one of his favourite places on earth, which really suggests that he does have a f- fondness for all the things shit and macabre. If Probably that was confused with Brighton. What do you think? Like since he split up with Helen of Bonham Carter, things have really gone downhill, like that badly now mm. that he's like Blackpool's brilliant. <laughs> the last famous person. I went did for it. a donkey ride on the beach. It gave me a he's brilliant idea. Following for a new Peter film. K. Right. He's the most famous person since Peter K. Right. So I thought you meant he was physically following Peter K. He probably is. Peter, Peter, please, I need is, a back. Yeah. Help me. I don't know. I mean, it could be interesting. I'd like it if all the illuminations come on and it's basically the Christmas lights from Batman uh, Batman Returns. And then, like, mm. loads of uh, weird circus folk come out and start taking hostages. Oh. And then Batman turns up. And then the Blackpool Tower, the top of it, is just Jack Skellington's head. Yeah, and no, all of the lights are just Johnny Depp. <laughs> Different <laughs> just, just as Jack dungeons. Sparrow. <laughs> it's just all yeah. of them. He didn't do Jack Sparrow. Tip Burton didn't. Yeah, that was. Um... So it's all Johnny Depp dresses us now. No, no, it isn't. It's Johnny Depp it's... looks like Johnny Depp. Even between, <laughs> even between other roles, he then goes to dress up like Jack Sparrow again. No, he <laughs> like... doesn't. That's not. That's like... that's you just trying to cause trouble. Yeah. He doesn't dress like Jack Sparrow. He does. He doesn't. He does. I saw him. Who got f- custody of him when Bonham Carter and Burton split up anyway? <laughs> Nobody. He's on his own now. Is that why he had that he whole thing in Australia? Him. He's like, I've lost my mum and dad. I don't know what to do. I've brought my dog into Australia. Oh, fuck. You, you know Terminator Salvation? Mm. Why didn't Eddie Furlong play the older version of John Connor? Because Christian Bale was more intense. Did I say Salvation? Yeah. I meant the other one. Genesis? Genesis. Yeah. Why didn't they get Eddie Furlong to play the older version of John Connor in Genesis? Because it's not like he's going to be busy. In all fairness, you could have said that for either film, because yeah. both films are older John Connor. No, but I'm, I understand why you'd have Christian Bale. Mm. I understand why you get that podgy-faced weirdo in mm. the new one. 
Like that, Eddie Villon would have done that, yeah. probably just for drink money. Probably for money, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the last thing he was in? I, I looked him up the other day, because I didn't know if he was alive or dead. We had a conversation about him at work. Uh, CSI New York. Wow. That's the last thing I saw him in. <laughs> was he a corpse? No, no, he was a killer. Oh, I just... That, he might have just wandered onto the set <laughs> and started demanding money from Gary Sinise. <laughs> Give me money and I'll leave, Gary. Film, film this man. He looks Gary, like he's killing. I know you're friends with Kevin Bacon, Gary. <laughs> Please, give me some money. Oh, I'll tell you what else is quite exciting. Um, that ginger kid who used to be on the back of my bike hanging out in the car. Seeking Perfection. Right. There's a book right. about the making of Tremors. Mm. And the oh, I films. saw you tweet about this, I think. Yeah, mm. the, it's uh, one of the guys who worked for SFX magazine right. has basically exhaustively researched the series. Mm. And it's going to be re-released with details for the, the fifth film, which has got Jamie Alexander in it Ooh. as the son of Burt Gummer. Uh. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. I may be pulling some strings at work to get that shown because oh. I love Tremors, yeah, and I'd love to see that at the cinema. Can you pull strings to get a film shown at work? I've done it before. Yes, you have. <laughs> and I will do it again. Because <laughs> <laughs> if there's nothing that makes me happier, it's pulling strings, it's killing your boss, and taking over. No, it's not a choice. I'm still living a job. I had Kevin Anna over. Yes, I saw Kevin Bin. They uh, came over last week. Have we done the show since then? Uh, yes, we, we did a show last week. We mentioned it though, did we? No. No, they came over. Uh, but we they... talked to, it was off the air, we talked to Emma, cause Emma took our little girl to see Minions. That's That's her right. first trip to the cinema and you mentioned yeah. that Kevin and Anna. From yeah, the they game came over, over with their kids and they were, they were lovely. Hmm. One of Kev's daughters went and had a little dance on the stage, yeah. which uh, Kev was worried she was going to fall off or something. So Kev got up there and fell off himself? No. Oh. Kev wouldn't have managed it upstairs. He's a decrepit old man in real life. Yes. He He's like, you know, like the Wizard of Oz, mm. the old 1930s one, mm. where uh, Kev's like that, basically. You think he's all fluff and kind of actually he's just a cranky old man behind a curtain. I never thought he was all fluff and everything. I always thought he was a cranky old man. Oh, well, you saw through his cutting ruse. Yeah. The Peter United fan, he's meant to be a cranky old man. But yeah, they uh, they enjoyed it. Everybody enjoys the looks. The mm. looks is a lovely place. I know. And uh, yeah, more people should go there. They definitely. But not so many anymore because we have only got 70 seats. Mm. 67 seats. Mm. Three wheelchair spaces. Yeah. Although apparently, I have been told, that on occasion people have bought a wheelchair just yeah, so they can sit on these seats. Yeah. Which is great. Like I love that idea. Mm. There's um, a Rocky Horror Live show on. Mm-hmm. And I'm tempted to go dressed as Dr. Scott in a wheelchair huh. just so I can have a wheelchair space. I still paid the same ticket price, but yeah. I thought it'd be quite funny just to wheel myself in in character, and then people wouldn't know if I was disabled or not. Yeah. We also said so you got up at the end. Well, we, like singing. actually, I could, I could put this out on the show as well because mm. somebody listening to the show might be able to help us out. Uh, we're doing. I need a wheelchair. <laughs> we're showing oh. Sing Along Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Ah. Uh, in November, and we're we're looking for a quadriplegic right. to play the Black Knight. Okay. Because we thought it'd be really funny if we just wheeled one in. Because <laughs> people are asked oh, to God. dress up, and I just thought, if you're a quadriplegic, you're going to have a sense of humour. Because mm. if anything I've learned from the last leg is disabled people are funny. Yep. And uh, I didn't know if there was someone with multiple amputations who would be willing to become the Black Knight for yeah. just for the night. They'd get a free ticket, and it'd be awesome because I'd get to wheel a, like a torso around for the day. Yeah. Obviously, they'd be alive. Yeah. And probably happy. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. But if you listen to the show and you are just a torso. To get in touch. Ah. Boy, you speak to speech to type for recognition to send us an email, but I'll right, we'll just tell someone to email us yeah. or use Twitter. I'm, I know there's lots of accessibility there things is, to disabled, loads. and I know all of this stuff. Like, I don't mm. know, I'm talking like I've got no idea what yeah. disabled access is to technology yeah. when I, I spend lots of time writing about it. Mm. Very odd. Uh, Beyond Eyes, I mentioned that last week. Yeah, speaking of stuff, things, asking some weird reviews. People say how slow and boring it is. I don't think people are quite sure what to make of it. I think people are kind of misunderstanding who you're playing as. Yeah. One of them said, you can't run. It's like, you're blind! Like, running's like shooting a big red barrel that you're standing next to, surely. It's like standing on top of Everest in a pair of skis and you've skied before. <laughs> it's like the, the biggest criticism seems to be every review that's given it a really bad review. It's like, oh, it's just too slow. You ever, have you ever walked in a game before? Mm. Oh, it's terrible. Don't walk. Like, well, what? <laughs> Yeah. Keep blind. But like, there, there, there does seem to be some weird mixed feeling about it. Mm. But it's phenomenal. Ignore those reviews. Same with Pixels. Go see it. I know I mentioned it last week, but really, go and see it. We had a mixed martial arts fighter. Mm. Come and see it, and he loved it. And his wife loved it, and his kid loved it. Yeah. That's about as good as it gets for reviews. <laughs> um, he tweeted about it, and mm. we 
retweeted it from the cinema account because it's like, well, if someone who could actually kill us in a fight thinks it's good, yeah. we'll go with that. <laughs> of course, we'll go with that. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've literally every person I, I that's come out. Need to send Shogun Pumba to see it now, <laughs> just if he goes to shit. Well, and then you can stand in the middle of the two people going, I don't know who to believe anymore. Well, Dalek went to see it earlier this week. Okay, and he was tweeting about how much he genuinely loved it. Mm. He, he tweeted me in on that as well. All right. So I obviously hadn't listened to the podcast at that point where I'd said I loved it. But, you know, it's, uh, it is a genuine joy. Yeah. And I watched it again the other night. And I'm going to go and see it again probably another two times. Yeah, you can cause... tell you get free cinema tickets now. Huh? Well, you know what? Yeah. And. <laughs> <laughs> the, but do you know what? I, I probably would have still paid to see a ticket anyway because I would have wanted to see it. Yeah. And then beyond that, I probably would have gone back again. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to arrange it. And, and if you guys go, I'll mm. probably come along with you as well. And, uh, I know Emma would like to see it. So. Just see your faces when you're all happy at the end. With the, 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 the it's finished. Pete, Peter Dinklage's last joke, which is so oh. good. So good, Rob. Is it a Destiny joke? No. Oh. No. <laughs> at no point does it go, that wizard came from the moon. That's a missed opportunity there. It really is. Um, right, finally. Mm. Tabletop Gaming Magazine yeah. is a thing. Here it's is a thing. Here's one here. Here's one. That's the sound effect of it. Magazine you shaking shaken. your magazine at me. I bought this one. You've got yeah. a copy that you didn't buy. I didn't. I won. I won a competition on the Player 2 cast. You did. Which, so. frankly, I should have won that. Nah, and no, I waited no, until they announced better. who won before I bought it. Because I was thinking, <laughs> I'm going to win that. My suggestion was Scott Pilgrim. Yeah? Scott Good P- suggestion. Scott Pilgrim Mom's in the Battle board Royale. Game. Yeah, well... Let's be honest, all tabletop games are bloodthirsty, really. It's just not fair. Right. Scott Pilgrim would actually had a mission structure and you could play as the... Uh, as Jason Schwartzman's character yeah. and control all of the other evil ex-boyfriends yeah. and yeah and I didn't win mm. I think I was snubbed yeah I think they just thought well we'll give it to, ba- to Rob even though Bouncy deserves it because that'll annoy Bouncy the most oh, so I went out and bought one yeah. so fuck you Nicole and Ian thanks Nicole and Ian <laughs> it did annoy me mm. so they were right in what they did it's a good magazine yeah it's uh, you can tell it's made by people who don't normally make magazines, it's but it is very made by standard. people who seem to like their tabletop gaming, and thankfully. they know a lot about it. The yeah. first one is literally the almost the entire thing is 101 of the most. It's a important good way to introduce to yourself to the marketplace. I think though. it is. Uh, it's only available in Derek Smiths and something else, Forbidden Planet. Yep. No two shops selling it at the moment, and this issue is available until September. The 15th, 9th. 9th, that was it. So, yeah, you've not got long if you want to get yourself a copy. £5.25, I believe. Yeah, five twenty five. It is a great introduction. It's a introduction. decent size for that money. A lot of magazines now are near a fiver. Yeah. And I mean, some of them are like 100 pages. 162 pages. Yeah, so you've got a bit more there too. With Hero Quest at the back, because yeah. they've got a time machine for tabletop games, which uh, is good. Is it starting to rain, Rob? Yeah. It is starting to rain. We'll wrap this up. Can we put the umbrella up? Would that cover it? Uh, yeah. Let's put an umbrella up live on air. Yeah, it's probably going to blow away now. Is that? Think a spider's going to come out of it. Doesn't bother me. Oh, it, the spiders! That's quite a nice umbrella. Yeah, sorry. Right. It's a bit classy for you. Yes, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. It's a parasol, not an umbrella, anyway. Yeah, it's an arsehole, not an umbrella. But it'll just keep us dry while we finish this off. You will. We're not going to go and run away. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's got a hero quest. I mean, there's pretty much as an introduction to gaming. It's a better well, for tabletop games specifically. Mm. I mean. Less so or anything else. Um, every game I own is in here pretty yep. much. In one form or another. So like yep. Batman Love Letter, they've got the regular Love Letter. Yep. They've Zombie got, Dice was there, I noticed. Yeah, Zombie Dice, Machikoro, uh, Splendors in here. Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride, Star Realms. You know, Marvel oh, Legendary. Like Infinite Game in there, which I know you got for your birthday a couple of years ago. I've still never played, because I'm we terrified need to play that. of it. We need to play that. We need to set up a regular game night, is what we need to do. And uh, we'll play for. I mean, that was a seventy quid game. <laughs> we can barely set up a regular podcast now. I don't need to know. Well, maybe we should roll the two together. Record like we are now, where we'll be roll, finished by get half it, nine. Roll, tabletop gaming. Roll. I like that. Good. Um, but yeah, we can do. We could do that easy enough, and then perhaps just do post podcast, mm. and then we can do a little thing about it. Oh, or a lot of course, extra, extra, yeah, extra whatever. Extra. But it's a good read. Um, <laughs> it's not too wordy. On some subjects, it's very wordy on the ones that deserve a lot of words. The Terminator Genesis miniature game does look phenomenal, mm. I have to say. I have a bit of an issue with miniature games, yeah, because it's an investment. You've got to sit down, you've got to paint your figures, you've got to, if you want to play them to their full... Time and 
ongoing investment as well. And it doesn't really work well if it's just you either. No. Um, So a lot of these kind of things. But there are rampant communities Mm. for it. Did you know the best thing about this magazine for me? My favourite part was it told you an estimated time to play the game. That That was probably my favourite part of the whole thing. That was good. I thought that was a lovely touch. You know what? Some of you go, I want to play a game. Have we got anything quick? And then you sort of sit and you look and it's like... Let's play that, and it turns out to be like a three-hour game. Yeah, and like, I wish I hadn't played that now. I never want to play any game. The, uh, the thing I love most is actually the adverts, which normally is not something that you go for for the shops. Yeah, because there's a lot of companies. Who, They've all tried to look non-threatening. The well, well my favourite one, the one I order from the most, is a company called Chaos Cards, and uh, they have an advert in here as well. So it's like they've gone to loads of different indie retailers. I like the way you're websites. padding for time. Are you trying to find the advert? <laughs> well, no, I'm talking about the actual Chaos Cards. I'm sure it's on this page. There we go, Chaos Cards. Yep. And it is it. It's just it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Nothing nothing too much. Went knocked up in the afternoon. Got a QR code on there. Just being all retro. But um, yeah, it's a it's a good magazine. If you're in if you're looking at getting started into it, or you mm. dip your toe in the water, there are far worse things to be getting into. Certainly a lot easier than reading an internet site and just mm. trying to find it because they're full of stupid opinions. I think because they because they're basically their lead thing is a hundred and one tabletop game yeah. to play. And I like they as I said that not the best touch for me was estimated time. How many yeah. people, how much estimated time to play. Perfect. Yeah. So like zombie dice, I think they allowed what, half an hour. Which is about right. You can have a, yeah, like yeah. a half an hour game. We we did it at MGPX. Absolutely. There was a group of us, I think we played in was it we played in no, we played individually, didn't we? We played individually. So six or eight of us, yeah, about half an hour, and we moved on to something else. Yeah. And I like that as a touch, but I, some of them, re- they're pretty honest reviews. You know, Game of Thrones explains what the Game of Thrones board game is, doesn't shy away from the fact that it is reputably one of the most complicated games to pick up. Yeah. So it is a case of, if you know somebody who knows how to play it, get them to explain it. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to basically read, have a book to read. Well, this is the thing. Like, this is, I think, aimed at people who might already have started to get into it and it's now sort of a next step yep. thing now and when i say you can tell the person's not made a magazine before i didn't mean that in the sense that it's a criticism yeah i mean it says that it's about as pure and raw as magazine gets mm. it is exactly it's it's what i would class as zine as yeah when someone's gone home uh, my friend chris wilkins does them mm. and uh you literally you go right i want to write this thing so there's the information there's the information there's the information and there's ads but there's very little padding yeah it is solid, rammed full. Mm. There's no shit articles about crap you don't care about. There's no great long, let's have a joke at the expense of this. I mean, they could have done, like the Metro <laughs> Nathan did. Ba- Nathan Bowley of Tabletop Games. <laughs> they could have done, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What was that website called that they had? The uh, oh, I I've watched chimp, it the other day, um, yeah. Uh, I forgot, I like, really watched it last week. Jesus Christ, uh, man. Look at how old we are. Uh, that show is 15 years old. I oh, know, and it still seems as timely as ever. What was the other one? Ray, Ray Sugar Pape? Ape. Sugar Ape. Yeah, oh, and yeah. then they made the uh, the R really big, so it looked like... Yeah. Ape, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Uh, much so like why did you say Rape? It doesn't look... Much like Clint magazine <laughs> yeah. that came out that just put the I and the L very close together. Yeah. To be clever. What else did that? Uh, Jamie East tweeted it. I think it was the Hunger Games, like so many days till Hunger Games. But the way they'd done it with the different font sizes, it did look like cunt in. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> there was, yeah, yes. Um, there's a there's a thing, uh, an article that came out in the Metro this week, mm. which was board games, if they were given the title they should actually have. Right. So I'm going to read you the title they think you should actually have, okay. and you're going to tell me what the board game is. We're going to play a game, Rob. Right. Are like, they all board games? games? These are all board games, right, or... So- Games you'd have on a shelf. Okay, as a so kid. tabletop but games. They're not like really obscure ones either. So, right, um, okay. you think this game will end in sex, but it won't. Uh, oh Christ! I think this game will end in sex. poker, <laughs> strip poker, Twister. Oh uh, yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, in a month, you'll only have three marbles. This could be one of two. Kaplunk. Or. Uh, hungry, hungry hippos. Hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> Um, Which my daughter picked out. Emma took her shopping, said you can choose one toy. She chose how many hours she got left. She's got most of them. That's Start good. with twenty. She's That's a good start. Yeah, she's doing okay considering that she's basically like a Tasmanian devil. The game of hiding out in Australia until the very end. Risk. Yep. The game of yelling and bookkeeping. <laughs> Monopoly. Yahtzee. Yeah, of course, Yahtzee. Yeah. Straight line, straight line, straight line, square. Not strictly a board game. L- Ludo? It's a toy, I'd say more. Straight line, straight line, straight line, square. 
etch a sketch. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Homicide for ages eight and up. <laughs> Operation. Pluto. Uh, Operation. Christ. Have you seen an eight year old with Operation? Uh, <laughs> this game could be played with two sheets of paper and a pen. Battleship. Yeah. It's a coil. Enjoy that. Slinky. Yeah. A fun filled afternoon of raising kids and buying insurance. Game of life? Yeah. This will never work. Monopoly? No. Uh, this will never work. Meccano? Mousetrap. Mousetrap. Play in the corners or lose? Play in the... Uh, tic-tac-toe. Othello. Othe- I never played Othello. Well, or like... reversey. Depending on which version it. you've got. Uh, Barbie's severed head for... <laughs> Barbie's severed head for would-be serial killers. <laughs> no idea what that was. Basically, like the girls' world thing they do. For oh, gosh. How to find out that everyone went to a better school than you? Um, Trivial Pursuit? Scrabble. Scrabble, that was the second. That would be my second guess. <laughs> you say sorry. What you really mean is fuck you. I'm sorry, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> Family Fight Night. Monopoly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one similar like that. But that's what could have been in that magazine. That's yeah. what I'm trying to get at. Is yeah. If it was going to be the Metro, which is basically the toilet paper of the underground. Yeah. Uh, it would have had stuff like that and it hasn't and I'm glad and I hope they never do uh, because there's room for that in editorial content but what it needs to do is it needs to be very respectful Mm. to something that is essentially a very expensive hobby it's also a growing hobby again yeah it's it's getting what appears to be becoming more popular either because more people are talking about it yeah so it's always been popular but behind closed doors yeah and I think websites offering this stuff has also helped a lot because before if I mean where would you have bought that sort of board game 20 years ago You'd have to find a shop that you'd, actually yeah, stopped them. You'd either have to go to a games workshop yeah. and hope they stop and, and then hope that, yeah, the yeah. games workshop deem it worthy of their stock mm. lists. Well, there's, so. yeah, the odd independent. I mean, there was one in Rivergate Arcade in Peterborough. Yeah, which is still there. Yeah, it's still there. It's still there. Yeah, still there. And, still uh, stuff like Magic the Gathering and things. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, these things existed. Whereas now you can kind of you can hear a podcast and somebody say, I'll tell you what a really good game is, uh, you know, apples, apples to apples. Yeah. And then uh, it's you can on go so, online social and media and things as well. It starts yeah. to spread. And I mean, look at the rise of Cards Against Humanity. Mm. For all of its strengths and weaknesses, I mean, it, the joke is over now for me. <coughs> I still think it's a, a solid game, mm. but once you've played a lot of the cards so many times, it's, the humour's gone. Yeah. Um, but that's, I think that's also an issue of a lot of board games. Sometimes you just play them, you just mm. play them once. There's a game I really want, it's called uh, Fun Employed. Right. Which basically, you're given a selection of cards. Mm-hmm which you can play in order in a mock job interview. Right. So the idea is you've got to win the job. So you could probably have like uh, bookkeeping skills, mm-hmm. accountancy, the ability to wrestle a rhino to the ground. And uh, you'd, you'd play those in the correct order. Yeah. And, but you've got to like word it all and you've got to come up with this thing. Mm-hmm. So they said play with the right people. That's the funniest game yeah. you can imagine. Uh, and Skull as well is a very, very funny game mm-hmm. with friends. Uh, but that's the thing, like, unless you hear about them, you don't know. Yeah. And magazines with 101 of the best, and there are games in there that mm. I know of that aren't in there. Yeah. But that's the point, is there are thousands of games. Mm. Like, th- there's a game called Cosmic Encounter, which my friend's got, and he's desperate to get me into it. And I said, oh, that's, that did really well, like, this year. It was mm. in, like, the top five sellers. He goes, oh, yeah, it's been out since the 70s. Like, it's been doing very mm. well for a long time. Because uh, uh, several of them are... Uh, and they refer to this in the magazine. They're, some of the newer ones, even, are based on old games from the seventies. Yeah, they're just modern updates or maybe a, a, a franchise license. Absolutely, utilizing that old style gaming. I call it an engine or theory or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that, that's what it said about Battlestar Galactica. Basically, yeah. Risk. Absolutely. So, but yeah, with added intrigue. Cause the Ooh, storms here. Yeah. So uh, the uh, electric fences are going to fail in a minute. The Tyrannosaurus <laughs> is going to uh, no, 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 a fallout. So it's going to be a nuclear attack, oh, yeah. or the Chinese are coming, or wherever it was. Um, the China in fallout. Yeah. yeah. So the Chinese are coming. So let's wrap it up quickly yeah. before we all die in a hurricane, yeah. or maybe we'll just end up like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And uh, find out that Kev's just a cranky old man behind a curtain. Yeah. Uh, so, if you like this show, you can yeah. rate and review it on iTunes, yep. or go on Spreaker and do what you want, or go on Stitcher, on, and whatever, really. Uh, tell a friend to listen. Drop on a website, you've written something this week. Yep. Uh, uh, I assembled some of the names who seem to be candidates to play Captain Marvel. 
Carol Danvers. It's a very interesting read hmm. as someone who doesn't know a huge amount about the hmm. run-up to it. So you can find that on lollicourse.co.uk. Uh, there are other articles on there as well, which are also just as good. Uh, if you think that we've given you some value over these 29 episodes now, yep. this is episode feel free 29, to make a yes. donation via our PayPal link on the mm-hmm. website as well. Uh, you don't have to donate much. Uh, everything that's donated over the next month is going into the Eurogamer Expo pot, yep. which will cover travel costs and probably buying the young lad who's covering our coffees, uh, paying for those coffees. Yep. So, uh, yeah, if, if you feel that we're giving you some value, maybe like 10 pence an episode, mm. give us £2.90. Mm. Yeah. That's fine by us. Uh, also, don't forget, as we come up to Christmas time, it's Amazon shopping time. Use our Amazon affiliate link. Yep. We've got a bit of a plan here. What we want you to do is, if each of you listening now has a mother that uses Amazon, go to the house, change the bookmark to our affiliate link, mm. and then while they're buying you gifts, we'll get financial support, yep. which is exciting. Uh, we've had overwhelming support so far. It's great that people are using it. And of course, it doesn't cost you anything. It nope. gives us a few pence each time. It does. So it goes to the running costs, the website, the podcast, yep. hosting, also web space, everything. So. And paying for this uh, this drink that I'm drinking now. Yep. So it doesn't. I bought that myself oh. out of my own money. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get an expensive slip just left on my kitchen <laughs> table going, uh, when, when you're ready. Yeah. Well, if you want to get in touch and you want to have a conversation with us, you can do so at We Are The Lola Course on Twitter, or you can just message us directly at Bounce Wolf and H after second V. Oh, at Rob McGregor 35. And yeah, so you can find us and message us and talk to us and mm. emails and stuff. Email yep. at wearelotofcourse at gmail.com. Yep. So, or just use the email button on the website. Yeah. Lots of interesting ways to talk to us. But most importantly, do that Amazon affiliate link bookmark thing. Because people don't remember to do it. Mm. And nobody really wants to have to go to a website first to then click through to Amazon. Just yep. bookmark it. Like Chrome, you can literally just have an Amazon button at okay. the top. That's what I've done. I put that all over the place. Mm. Loads of people don't even know they're using it. No. <laughs> well, and also watch uh, Fortitude. Yeah. Fortitude and Whitechapel. They're both great. So we will be back next week with another show. We will. I'll have played more games, including yep. How to Survive yep. uh, Stormwatch Edition, or whatever it's called, yeah. uh, which is downloading as I speak. Yep. I should point out, we might be a bit late next week, because I'm away for a couple of days, and it's your birthday. It is my birthday. Maybe so. we record one at my birthday party. Yes. No. So it might be later, or it might be complete bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, late and complete bullshit. Perhaps. Uh, either way, I'll probably be We'll drunk. work something out. Yep. But I'll be excited because <laughs> it'll be my birthday. So if you also, if you want to make a donation to the website to celebrate my birthday, do yep. that. There we go. And Rob will buy me something related yeah. out of it. Any donations this week, 10% will go towards my birthday fund. Oh. No, they won't. It'll all go towards running costs. Because that also comes out of our pocket, so it will be the same. So, right, enjoy the rest of your week, folks. It's been cracking talking to you from this raining garden and yeah. the brolly. And we will see you next week. Say goodbye, Robert. Goodbye, Robert. And goodbye, people all over the world. People. 